Yo, too, it's Mike Pang Gangster here. Today, I'm bringing you guys the 4231 custom tactics for the old gen. Now, you could try this on the new gen, but I've been playing a little bit on the old gen just to see how it works. Uh, another thing, let me just fix this camera real, real quick. You guys see me a little bit better. Uh, I got a new mic set, a new headset. So, let me know if the voice is better. Anyways, let's get into the custom tactics. Now, this is the team I'm using. Of course, you use whatever team you think is uh, good for you, you know. This is the one I have. So, as you can see, I already have it set it up as the 4231 in game. I mean, as a team, so I don't have to go into like uh, game plans, right? So, now, whenever you're playing old gen, I've noticed there's not that many people that talk about tactics, but I've noticed on old gen, players seem to move way more aggressive, like uh, around the pitch. So, uh, like even when you have them on balance, for example, like defensive style, they seem to move pretty well. But I feel like this year, having tactics like pressure on every touch or uh, press on possession loss is very overpowered. Now, the one that been nerfed a lot is constant pressure. I do not recommend using that at all. But I definitely rep recommend using pressure on every touch or press after possession loss, which is a bit more riskier than pressure on every touch, you know. But I like the way pressure on every touch feels. Um, the width. This is a game where you need to attack like on the wings, but you need to defend the middle, if, you, if, it make, if that makes any sense, right? Uh, I've noticed that keeping your width uh, very, very low makes it very hard for people that don't use the wings um, in this game. And I've noticed a lot of people are using narrow formations also in this game, and they're attacking throughout the middle. Uh, if you're somebody that's good at defending, for example, like the wings, which you're manually defending, it makes it extremely, extremely hard for people to like attack you in the midfield if uh, in the middle if you're using very low width. I mean, very low, like 20 width. Now, um, when it comes to depth, uh, and since the new patch, I feel like you can't go over than over than 55. Um, Personally, I think anywhere between 50 to 55 is okay. Anything over 55, you start like asking for counters. Um, now, I've been using, uh, I, I've been testing like 51, 52, 53, 54. Um, been playing around with it a little bit. I, I feel like I've been in 53, 54, just a bit under 55. I feel like it's a little bit better now how much of a difference is it i don't think it's a big difference but i think you should play around between 50 to 54 i think once you go to 55 it starts to like like that borderline you know what i mean like it's it's hard to say because when you look at the the map there you see them moving right you, you know what i mean like you see them moving at 55 right 53 they go a bit downer so I'm putting it on 53. Now, you guys, I would suggest playing around with that a little bit just to see what, what suits your style a little bit better. Now, for built-up play, I feel like this year, fast built-up is a lot better than any other year. Now, some people like to have balance because they, they like to have their own players and make their own runs and stuff. And I personally like fast built-up because I struggle sometimes. At least myself, I struggle sometimes like getting my players to move. And I feel like fast build-up kind of like gets everybody moving a little bit. Also, a lot of people over here use direct passing. I'm a big fan of forward runs, to be honest with you. I feel like forward runs, players just fucking take runs, man, like constantly. Where direct passing, I feel like a lot of the times my players are just standing still, which kind of bothers me, to be honest with you. Uh, so forward runs is something I suggest. Like fast build-up, forward run, try it out. It is very attacking, but let me tell you, at least you get your players actually like advancing and moving. And that's for me, that's very important. Having your players move. Um, the width. Remember where I told you, like in this game, you have to defend, you have to attack with width, like with the wings. It is very, very important to have high width um, in this game. Since you're playing a formation like 4 2 3 1, which is considered like a narrow formation, increasing that width is very important. Um, I know that as I'm defending, I'm defending with like low width. The reason why is because manually, I feel like very comfortable defending the wings when I'm using my CDM or whatever. I just basically press myself. But when I'm attacking, I feel like I want to expand my opponent's defense. So having high width, I mean, when I mean high width, like I mean high, like you could go even as high as 80. Now I'm 
been playing around with 75. But I've seen people go even high as high as 80 or whatever. Even I've seen even higher than that. And I'm telling you, like, try it out. You'll be very impressed with what wit could do to your opponent. This is something I feel like a lot of people misunderstand how this works. For example, you're going to notice this in the instructions. A lot of people seem to uh, go between anywhere between five and seven. For people that don't understand how, th how this works, okay? Because it tells you over here, when, when, when in a crossing zone, you will have players making runs into the penalty areas, right? To make the time, okay? Whatever. Now, if you look at the 4 2 three, one, okay? You have four attackers, right? You have three cams and a striker. So if you would put this at four, the only players that would ever attempt to get into the box usually should be your three cams and your striker, okay? The problem with that is that you don't have enough men committed up front to basically create that width when you're attacking your opponent. If you do five, what you're basically saying is that that CDN that you have, for example, on balance, you're telling them to come and join you, right? If you would have six, an example, but you would have your CDM on stay back while attacking, but he would have, for example, high, high work rates, would he like overtake the tactics here, like the ones in the instruction, or would he um, follow those instructions and stay back while attacking? Okay, uh, I think this is where work rates make a big difference. If you have someone that has like medium, like a medium high in the CDM role, and you have, for example, stay back while attacking, even if you put six over here, I feel like he still stays back. But if you have somebody that has high, high work rates, if you put six, he seems to come up front sometimes because he starts to like overtake those instructions and he starts to like play with his work rates. Seven is also very, very good. But believe it or not, what's even better is eight. Okay, and I'm going to explain to this. I know that you're committing a lot of players up front. The thing is this in this game, having your full backs join is also very important. And this is why we're going to put them on eight because you're going to see with the instructions what I'm going to do. Uh, when it comes to corners and free kicks, I've been keeping it at one, but I see this, a lot of people are using between one and three. Go ahead and use whatever uh, fits your style. Uh, that's the way my players are lined up. Instruction. Now, these are, are, are very, very uh, common instructions that people use a lot on the 4-2-3-1. For example, a lot of people have their strike on C-Central. I like that. A lot of people also have them on getting behind. Now, some people will have them on balance uh, defensive support. Some people will have them on stay forward. I personally like to have them on stay forward, okay? And the reason why I like that is because I want to have at least two guys up there that are always up there uh, anytime so that if I have to, like attack as fast as possible uh i'm gonna go ahead and just like you know do a driven pass as fast as possible to one of my forwards up there right so for example um i also have my middle cam and stay forward now some people do put like get into the box for crosses which it could work but i've been leaving this unbalanced i've been only putting on stay forward when it comes to my uh left cam and right cam i've been keeping them on balance but i am putting them on get into the box for crosses the reason why I like this is because in this formation, as you can see, I have eight players going to the box. Um, and for me, putting them on getting to the box for crosses, it actually gets these guys inside the box. But the reason why also I'm putting them there is because the left backs and the right backs, they're going to be on balance, but they're going to be on overlap. And when you have eight players uh, into the box, what's going to happen with the overlap, uh, with the overlap, with the eight players in the box and the, and the tactics, it's going to actually invite your uh, your left back and your right back to attack, to join the attack a lot more often than you think. But your CDMs, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be putting on cut passing lanes and stay back while attacking with cover center. The reason why you're doing this is because um, you want them to kind of defend, but at the same time, the eight player tactic in the box kind of like will counter, like will basically also invite them to come up front. So even when you have this on stay back while attacking, they're still going to commit to when you have the ball and going up front. The only difference is that when you're going to be defending, they're going to come and they're going to come back and defend because you had them on stay back while attacking. I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys, but I would say 
try it out try it out this is mostly for i noticed old gen but i'm pretty sure this works also properly on new gen try it out let me know what you think also let me know in the comments what you guys think about the new mic if it's better if the voice is better and all that stuff uh hopefully these tactics are going to help you this is the ones i'm using at the moment i feel that they're they're pretty good for the new patch again uh they're they're going to be definitely going to be uh just uh adjusted a little bit as days go by because more people are going to start realizing what's more overpowered than others but for for the meanwhile this is what i think is working pretty well try it out let me know what you guys think if you guys are using the 423 on go ahead try it out and let me know what you guys think in the comments i'll see you guys in the next uh video have a good day guys bye bye